Welcome to the Worth Listening Podcast, where we focus on having positive and productive conversations around money. I'm your host, Lauren, a four-time Olympian and certified financial planner. On this show, my guests share their money stories. Everyone has a unique story and experiences both wins and losses when it comes to money. My intent is to give listeners something they can relate to, something that builds their courage to be open and take control of their own money story. When I'm not creating a great show for my listeners, I'm running my company, Worth Winning, where I help individuals and families organize their finances. Check us out at worth-winning.com. All right, now on with the show. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the 40th episode of Worth Listening. I am so, so happy that I have so many worthy listeners. I couldn't come up with anything better. Thanks for listening, whether this is your first time tuning in or your 40th episode and you are a diehard fan. I appreciate each and every one of you listening to this podcast. And if this is your first time listening, never fear. This episode will give you a really good chance to find out what we talk about on this podcast and give you a summary of the last 20 episodes. So you can take a few notes on the ones you want to go back to and get ready to check us out. This is the 40th episode, which means we are also 40 weeks into the year. 12 weeks left. Yes, it is the fourth quarter. I know many of us have set goals and New Year's resolutions and action items that we wanted to complete for our 2018 to be awesome. And I know that very few of us have probably marked every single thing we wanted to do this year off. I think it is safe to say that what you planned for 2018 and what is actually happening in 2018 are probably two different things, whether that's for the better or for the, yeah, stuff is not going so great. It's really hard for us to be able to tell the future, but it is important still that we plan because when you have a plan, you are able to pivot. So no matter what it is that you had on that list, pull it out if you haven't in a while. You've been stuck in the grind. You haven't been able to really focus on the things that you said you wanted to do at the beginning of this year. Pull the list out. Go look in the drawer, the notebook, the journal, wherever you got it stashed and say, what's on this list? What can I get done before the end of 2018 and let's start knocking some stuff out. We can do it. I haven't reached all my 2018 goals. That is for sure. And things definitely have not gone as planned. Some things better, some things worse, but you can bet your butt I'm coming out swinging in the fourth quarter. I am not giving up on 2018. So let's do this. All right. All right. Enough of me chatting it up. This is a solo episode. All you get is me. I'm not introducing a guest. I know people are like, Lauren, where's the person? There is no person. So I'm sorry to disappoint, but hopefully you're going to love listening to me chat it up with you for a few minutes. All the random tangents and all the things I want to talk about. I'm going to start though by summarizing the last 20 episodes. And we're going to start off with episode 22. Deshaya Williams owns a wellness company that offers birth fitness, and yoga coaching. And the things I loved about her episode was this idea of sometimes you have to humble yourself to get your situation in order, whether that is moving in with the parents, grabbing yourself a roommate to cut expenses, selling a new car that you just got and buying one that is a little bit cheaper, older, that you can pay cash for, grabbing a side hustle. Sometimes we just got to humble ourselves to get our situation in order, but it's worth it to make those sacrifices in the short term to be able to do what we want in the long term. I love that about Deshea's story. She also talks about how you don't need to take all the student loan money that is offered to you. And I think that's a really important message for everyone to pick up on is they're giving away money for quote unquote education, but The student loan debt crisis is a real thing and a lot of people are struggling post-college and what I'd like to be able to do is go around and start educating parents and high school students so that they know things like you don't have to take all that money. But if you're in grad school or you're parent of a child, just think about that. You know, there's the cost of attendance that's listed on the financial aid form, but you don't need every dollar that is listed there to be able to actually attend the school. All right. On episode 23, 
We had Georgia Rapley, who runs the Munson Company, and she hosts awesome retreats for women. In this episode, the thing that stood out to me was lifestyle creep. This is when you start to spend more because you're making more. And then you end up stuck in the same situation you were in when you were making less. I know so frequently we say, if I could just make more money then, if I could just get a raise, if I could just get one leg up on this thing then, but then actually comes and we don't do anything productive with the increase in finances that we receive. So it's really, really important to continue to live the same lifestyle that you were living even when more money starts coming in, because that increases your savings, that increases your opportunity to do things that are more associated with your goals. In episode 24, we had Marcus Ogden, a former NFL player who is now a motivational speaker, and rightfully so, because he has a really motivational story. Marcus keeps it real with us about the process of being drafted to the NFL as a lower round draft pick. We hear a lot of the story of the top round draft picks, but we don't hear so much about those who are drafted in the lower rounds. And so he kind of breaks it down for us what it's like to go pro from the lower rounds. Marcus was always thinking ahead, so much so that he already had a plan for life after sport. So much so that as soon as sport was over, he was in the midst of building a construction company. It ended up as an eight-figure business, but one bad business deal had him filing for bankruptcy. Marcus talks to us a lot about the idea of going from very high to very low to very high to very low and riding that roller coaster, but also how to bounce back from something that seems to be a financial catastrophe in the moment to getting yourself back on track. Yes, you can go from balling to broke, but you can also go from broke back to balling, or you can start at broke and still get to balling. It can be done. In week 25, we had Rianca Dorsonville, a certified financial planner. And there was so much information shared in this episode, as you can imagine. In addition to Rianca telling her own personal money story, she shared so many tips about the things she learned as a certified financial planner. One of the things I loved, though, was this idea of a family account. There are many people who end up being the high earner amongst their family, not just their immediate family, but those in their inner circle that that don't necessarily live in their household. And there's a lot of pressure if you're maybe a first time college graduate or a big time sports player, or you're just the one who seems to be doing the best out of all those around you. There's pressure to help the rest of the family out. My key takeaway from Rianca's episode was this idea of a family account that allows her to give her family money without derailing her own finances. So she sets a certain amount aside, puts it in the family account. If someone needs something, it comes out of the family account. If the family account is empty, then guess what? The answer is no. I think it's a really good practice to be able to put some criteria in place for when you're going to be able to tell people no, because otherwise you'll always be saying yes. And if you're a millionaire and you give a million people $1, then guess what? I don't even have to tell you guys. I know, I know my my listeners are brilliant. So they're like, Lauren, let's move on. All right, episode 26, we had DJ Moultrie who launched a private equity firm called KOG Acquisitions. I had no idea how to start your own private equity firm. I know it's like a term that's thrown around all the time. And so DJ does a really good job of breaking down for us this world of private equity and acquisitions and what is all of that? One of the things I loved is how he talked about the importance of always learning. He believes you should always be an intern, no matter what part of life you're in. You know, the intern is that one that's that's trying to learn everything, willing to work for nothing just to get the wisdom. Yes, I think it's true. We should all always be an intern. In episode 27, we had Kayla McDowell, who is the co-founder of a production company that specializes in podcasts and YouTube channels. In this episode, we talk about the importance of getting scholarships and grants to reduce the cost of education and how a side hustle doesn't always mean that you're working towards quitting your job. It's super trendy now to make your side hustle your full time gig, but that's not what everyone's doing. Some people are hustling on the side to actually get extra income to be able to take themselves to the next level. You don't have to feel the pressure of everyone else leaving their job. Everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. If you're an employee, 
love your job. We need people to work at various companies here and there. So do you, be you, be your best you. And that's what Kayla and I talk about in this episode. All right, week 28. This is a game changer. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but if there's one episode I can recommend that you guys listen to, it is episode 28. Jasmine Henderson is a former professional soccer player, an author, and a speaker. And we talk about so many different things. But one of the things that's really amazing is her journey to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro to play a soccer game. And it's not just the actual journey to the top, but she was on a real deal journey in that moment of her life. When I tell you, it's like, you know how they say, ooh, can we have some church up in here, y'all? It was like that. This episode is for anybody who is needing to get themselves inspired, be uplifted today. Just go to episode 28. That's all I can say. All right. In episode 29, we had another female athlete, an Olympic swimmer, Samantha Livingstone. Samantha is now a high-performance coach and a motivational speaker. She and I chat about the negative impact that being a perfectionist can have on your finances. So often, we're all striving toward being a perfectionist and getting to be in our best and all these different things. But yeah, being a perfectionist is kind of setting a pretty high bar. You want to be your best you, but... Samantha and I talk about what happens when you feel like you need to be perfect. We also talk about how she passed up being a professional swimmer, gave up scholarship money, and went into teaching instead of doing something more lucrative. Okay, episode 30. In episode 30, we had another NFL player. I know you guys, it's NFL season right now. All these NFL players we've had on. Yes, if you're an NFL fan, go back and listen to all the NFL player episodes and tell a friend about them because they are amazing. No two players are alike. And Jaron is no different. He transitioned from the NFL life to become the CEO of a health and wellness company. He and I talk about having multiple A plans so that you can be prepared. We also talk about planning for life after sports before his NFL career ended and how important it is to ask questions when you don't understand something. This is a common string among the NFL players. If you listen to DJ Williams episode, he talks a lot about the idea of asking questions. So frequently when you're not well versed on a subject, you take the word of the person on the other end, but it's important to ask questions and make sure that you have a good understanding of what's going on. Moving on to episode 31. This is another good one. So for those of you that don't know, I, in addition to being a certified financial planner, have a specialty in student loans. It's something I got really passionate about as clients continued to come to me saying things like, I don't think that I'm going to be able to get married. I don't think anyone will ever love me because I have so much debt. Couple clients coming together and saying, I'm really worried about his or her student loan debt. People just feeling trapped because they have so much debt and they don't even know where to start. They want to make responsible financial decisions, but they just feel the burden of all this debt weighing them down. And so the more I looked into it, the more I learned, the more I learned, the more I realized there was a lot more I needed to learn. And there's so many strategies around how to best repay your student loans. And for those of you who listen regularly, you also know that I don't do a lot of sharing my expertise because I think it's really important to have the guests that I invited on their show tell their story. And it's not my job to jump in and and boss everyone around. I do my little word of the day at the end of the day. So I was looking for a guest to talk about student loans, despite my expertise. And I found Travis and boy, oh boy, did I get more than I bargained for. So Travis Hornsby runs studentloanplanner.com. Yes. Studentloanplanner.com. Go there if you have student loan debt, because the website is the bomb. It will change your life. I'm sure of it. And so Travis' story is he graduated from college with no debt and $40,000 in savings and investments, which you're like, wait, so how did he become a student loan expert? Yes. Well, he fell in love with a girl who had a boatload of debt, a doctor. And because he loved her, he was like, I got to figure out how to fix her life. Like, what are we going to do about this student loan debt? And so he started to dive deeper and deeper into what the strategies are, the repayment options. And just like me found out there is a lot to this, but the good news is there's a lot of strategies that people can use to be able to pay as little as possible to prepare yourself for the big tax bomb at the end. If you're going for taxable forgiveness, 
how to use public service loan forgiveness to your advantage. And really, one of the things I love most is this idea that you can save and pay down your student loan debt. And a lot of people feel like I'm putting so much toward my debt, there's nothing left for me to save. Well, frequently, it's more advantageous for you to put money away for yourself so that you pay less toward your student loans. I know, I said a lot there. You're like, wait, what, Lauren? Pay myself instead of my student loans. Uh, Yeah, just listen to the episode. Episode 31, Travis Hornsby, and go to studentloanplanner.com because it will change your life. In episode 32, we had Tashari Berry, who is now a financial advisor, but that's not where she started. She started by going to teach English in China. She got right out of school and spent a lot of time abroad and says that it's a really wonderful idea for those who are trying to find themselves, trying to figure out what they want to do. I'm not quite sure what the next steps are. This is a great option to be able to see the world on someone else's dime. You get paid to do it. It gives a a great opportunity for savings or a great opportunity to pay down student loan debt. So this is a super cool episode to listen to if you're a younger professional trying to figure out what you want to do with your life and you want to travel. In episode 33, we had Olympic gold medalist Jenna Batarmo, a professional track and field athlete and a 2012 gold medalist in the 4x100 meter relay. We talk a lot about the idea that athletes retire twice. You'll retire once from sport and you'll retire at some point in the future, similar to the rest of America. And so you need to prepare for both of those experiences. That means starting to save now. Jennifer talks about how she's saving as a professional athlete now for the future and how she's allocating her finances appropriately. If you know a track and field athlete, I suggest you have them tune into this because she kind of breaks down how money in track and field works. And if you're a sports fan, an Olympics fan, you should definitely tune into this one because I know there's a lot of questions about how do Olympians, in fact, get paid. In episode 34, we had entrepreneur Alicia Reese, who is also the author of a book called Eating Elephants. Make sure you grab it if you don't already have it. In this episode, Alicia keeps it so real about the things she encountered in life, the hustling she had to do to be able to make it, and this idea that if you don't have it, you just have to create it. She is that can't stop, won't stop kind of girl. She's absolutely incredible. In episode 35, we had Rebecca Aladine, a professional makeup artist. Rebecca and I talk about her traveling all over the world. Rebecca and I talk about what it's like to travel all over the world, running her own business, how to break generational poverty, and the difference between a necessity and a treat. Because you have to know where to spend and where to cut back. In episode 36, we had Jonathan Weislow, Director of Operations at Amicon Management. Also, Jonathan is a fellow Hurricane that played baseball. In this episode, we talk about how patience can go a long way. Also, saving can go a long way. Jonathan and his wife were living in a one-bedroom apartment for seven years saving up money. Guess what? They were saving 60% of their income. I'm like, what? How is that possible? Welp. Jonathan's going to tell you. Make sure you check this one out. During this time period, I was traveling all over the place and I got to meet somebody really cool, which brings me to my week 37 guests. I met Jamila Souffrant at Podcast Movement. She's a fellow podcaster who runs a podcast called Journey to Launch. It's amazing. You guys should check it out. And Jamila's story is based around this idea that she's working in corporate America, but she wants financial independence. She is a big proponent of the financial independent retire early movement. And she is on her journey to leave corporate America and retire by 40. In this episode, we talk a lot about what financial independence is and creating that definition for you, customizing financial independence to yourself. We also talk a lot about what to do if you're living paycheck to paycheck. One of the things she suggests is start by figuring out a budget. I know you guys have heard the big bad B word multiple times on multiple podcasts. If you haven't created one yet, you should because it's a common theme. Those who are winning at their finances have a big bad budget. Jamila and I talk about how you can't save and invest if you don't know the numbers. And how can you know the numbers if you don't have a budget? Yes, get a budget. I'm saying. Okay. In episode 38, we have a former opera singer, Blaine Bristow, who is the founder of Beyond Bridges Social. 
And this episode is really cool for me because Blaine was really nervous about talking to me. She was thinking about canceling. She didn't want to tell her story. She was worried about being judged and she was embarrassed about her situation. But I know this episode is going to help a lot of people. Blaine shares an inspiring story of how to dig out a deep hole of debt. Her philosophy is using investment strategies to be able to pay off this debt in just 24 months. By the time you guys listen to this, I'm pretty sure she'll be out of debt. And if you're in a bunch of debt right now, make sure you listen to this episode so you know you're not alone. And maybe you can even feel inspired to take control, take action and get your debt under control. And last but not least, last week we had Latoya Rush, a Navy veteran who's now a professor teaching surgical technology and building her side hustle as a food blogger, chef, and caterer. Oh my goodness, the biscuits on her website look amazing. Latoya and I talk about how small things matter in your finances. Lots of small spending adds up to a lot of money, but a lot of small savings can add up too. In this episode, we talk about how good old-fashioned hard work is the way to better understand your financial situation. Hopefully, I didn't bore you guys to death. You heard a little bit about an episode that you didn't know much about and you want to go back and listen to. And we got some pretty cool episodes lined up for you for the remainder of the year. I think you guys are starting to see some things as you listen to the podcast. Things like the emergency fund, a budget, automating your savings, and not being afraid to cut expenses and grab a side hustle. Another common thread we keep seeing is that most people didn't have money talked about in their household growing up. Most people are not having conversations with their friends about money. And it's an important thing to talk about. I hope that you all are starting to feel inspired to talk to your friends and your family members about money, to talk to your parents and have that thing. So it's not so passe. That's the point of this podcast. And of course, I believe that Talking to anyone will help you educate yourself, but talking to a professional is that thing that can take you to the next level. The thing I hear most frequently is, I'm going to get a financial planner when I get more organized. I got to get myself together first. Well, a real financial planner is actually supposed to help you get yourself together. Notice I said a real financial planner, a certified financial planner will help you get more organized. I feel like a lot of people say they have to get more organized because they're thinking they've got to get their basic budget in place and they've got to get their cash flow together and they've got to start saving so that then they're going to be ready to start investing. And that's when they're going to need a financial planner. This is the biggest misconception out there. A true financial planner is not just going to focus on your investments. They're going to provide comprehensive advice on all things personal finance. Their wisdom and their expertise is going to stretch far beyond just investing. And investing is important. Don't get me wrong. That is part of the process, but we know that's not the only thing we're dealing with in our finances on a day-to-day basis. There's a lot more to it. So don't wait to reach out until you get more organized. I'm getting ready to get on my soapbox for a second. If one more person says to me, I have a financial advisor at so-and-so life or blah, 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 mutual. I am going to scream. I'm so sick of people telling me that they have a financial advisor at one or the other of those places and that they're in a savings plan. That is a key red flag word. They're like, oh yeah, I'm good. I already got an advisor and he's got me on a really great savings plan. And I'm even more pissed when athletes come to me with a bunch of annuities inside of their retirement plan. Like, what is... uh! So I'm just going to say this. I know, it's my podcast. I can say whatever I want. You don't have to agree with me. Investments are an important part of financial planning. Yes, yes, they are. Insurance is also an important part of financial planning. But both of those things are parts of financial planning. Dear people who sell products in order to make a living, stop telling people that you are a financial planner. If you sell life insurance, be your best you. Don't pretend to be me. Don't pretend to be any certified financial planner or a financial planner, period, or a financial advisor, even. All these words get thrown around, but 
You are not in the business of providing objective financial advice. You are in the business of selling a product, not a service. Say it loud and proud. I sell life insurance. Don't pretend that it's a quote unquote savings plan. Don't forget to tell people about the surrender charges. Don't forget to tell people about how you get compensated for their purchase. Stop making it seem like it's free. And this is something you're doing out of the kindness of your heart. That's poppycock. No, it's not right. Don't do that. If you want to provide financial advice, go get certified and do it. But taking a quick peek at someone's basic living expenses and telling them that they can afford to save this amount into the quote unquote savings plan is wrong. And you know it. It's not right. I understand you have a family to feed. Everyone needs to make a living. There is a place for insurance, but it is not based on misleading people into thinking they're being responsible when really a significant portion of the first year to year and a half of whatever policy you sold them is going directly into your pocket. And it's going to be very hard for them to take a step backwards if they decide that that is not the best route for them. Okay. I'm done. I'm ending my angry rant now. I just want people to get the service that they need. I want people to do the right thing. And I know a lot of people that sell insurance that are wonderful people. So I'm not throwing shade at the people. I'm throwing shade at the sales pitch. I'm throwing shade at the companies that are feeding the sales pitch to the people. And then they in fact go out thinking that they're doing the right thing for people. It's just not right. This whole salesy world is not right. People deserve better than that. All of us deserve better than that. Okay, I'm done with the angry rant, but I really want what's best for people. I want you to make good decisions about your finances. I want everyone to have financial independence. I want people not to be bogged down or embarrassed about their story because their finances are all messed up. I want people to reach out for help and to feel comfortable and to feel value when they pay for help. Of course, I would love every person that listens to my podcast to be my client. But the most important thing to me is that you get the help you need. Where are some places you can go if you're looking for help? xyplanning.com or napfa.com. We'll put a link in the show notes for you. It's xy, like the letter x, the letter y, planning.com or napfa, n-a-p-f-a.com. Those are two places where you can find fee-only certified financial planners that will take a comprehensive look at your finances. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say worth-winning.com is also a place that you can find a fee-only certified financial planner, also known as me. All right, for real, guys, I'm out of here. I definitely didn't plan on talking this long. I thought this was going to be a 15-minute episode, but what had happened was. So if you have questions or suggestions for guests, or you would like to share your own money memoir, please do not hesitate to reach out at worth-listening.com. <laughs>